I have words. <clears throat> Quite a few words. And, um... Before I say anything else, you know, spoilers, of course, as always, about this last episode of Survivor. I'm gonna be ranting a little bit in this video, but you know, bam, right, right here, timeline. If you want to skip the rant and just move on with, you know, the the rest of the episode beyond this point, but my rant is going to be about Sandra Diaz Twine. Or, crap, sorry. Or my new nickname for her, Sandra Diaz Weiner. Or Sandra Diaz Wine. <sighs> so the episode starts at Edge of Extinction. There we go. Not, not straight. It's straight now. Okay. So the episode starts at the Edge of Extinction. Poverty has just arrived there. And you know, she's talking about what happened at her tribal council, how her and Michelle were pretty much cornered, that they had nowhere to go, so it was, it was inevitable that either her or Michelle was going to get voted out. Uh, but then Sandra arrives at Edge at a of Extinction, and, you know, Parvati, Parvati's happy about this. You know, Parvati's happy Sandra got voted out right after her. <laughs> It was, it was kind of like a little bit of icing on a very depressing cake for Parvati. <laughs> or as Parvati called it, her consolation prize. And, you know... <laughs> consolation it was. In more ways than one. Because, you know, Sandra arrives at the Edge of Extinction and not even ten minutes go by. And she's like, you know what? This isn't for me. I'm just going to go home. I'm giving up. Throwing in the towel. And... My jaw dropped. Yeah, I, I, I just couldn't believe the audacity of this moment. Why were you there? Why, why did you even go out there to play? <clears throat> It was shameful. Downright shameful for you to go all the way out there just to quit. Not even 10 minutes after getting voted out. And, you know, and she tried to justify herself. She tried to vindicate herself. That was even... That was the even bigger punch to the gut. That she tried to make herself look so heroic. Because she quits. You know how she how she's like, I can I can retire. Thanks, Mayla. Yeah, how she how she's like, I can retire now, knowing that I have such a wonderful legacy, you know, coming in from Survivor and that, you know, I, I you know, Survivor's given me so much and everything and you know it's given me such a wonderful life and a wonderful career. I can retire happy. No. No. What legacy, Sandra? What legacy are you leaving behind that you quit? What sort of legacy do you really have? That you're pathetic? Because that's the only legacy that I can see from you. you know, there, there are four other female winners of Survivor that were not picked to be, to be in this season. Tina, the Sepia, Jenna, Natalie White. Those four would have given an arm or a leg to have the spot that you just toss aside because you got voted out 
I, I lost the game. I, I have no chance of getting back in there. So you just give up. What's that old saying? What's that? How's it go? Quitters never win and winners never quit. You had no business being there. None whatsoever. And you know, for those of you who are thinking, oh, but Jenna quit her, her, her season and all that, and just, I'm gonna stop you right there before you say anything else about that because the reasons for Jenna quitting wasn't because you know she couldn't hack yet. It wasn't because she felt that she didn't stand a chance to win the game. No, she quit because she sensed in her heart and in her gut that if she didn't leave, she would have missed out on the opportunity to say goodbye to her mom before she died. She knew that. That if she didn't leave, she would miss that opportunity. And it turns out that that's what, exactly what would have happened. Because her mother passed away eight days after she left. So you know what? This isn't something. This isn't something about you know Sandra leaving because of a family emergency and all that. No, no. This is Sandra leaving because she couldn't hack it. She had no right to be there at all. Yeah. You know, here here's someone who has you know yeah. Granted, she's won twice. But, you know, that's, like, even more reason for her to just not throw in a towel like that. But to add salt on the wound, the only reason she won those two seasons was because of bitter juries. The jury was bitter at Lil because uh, she was voted out of the game, wanted to come back and beat them all to the punch at the end. They were bitter towards uh, uh, poverty. Because, uh, you know, she, she, she was stuck in a position where she had no choice but to play the game with Russell Hance. And they were better towards Russell Hance because he played the game too hard. What did Sandra do? Not a damn thing. Not a damn thing. And she gets $2 million. As proof of this, as proof of this, the two more times that she played where she actually did try to make moves, where she actually did try to play the game, every single thing that happened to her backfired. And you know what, what, what was her what was her whole spiel about it? You know, like, oh, you know, I feel I feel bad for Denise because she's gonna get voted out. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give her my idol and hope she doesn't write my name down. Oh no, she wrote my name down. Ah! But that, 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 that's on her though. That blew up so badly in her face. She should have known better. As someone who's won twice and has, got, and has gotten voted out, she should have known better. And you're playing against winners. People who aren't dummies. People who know what they're doing out there. Why did you do that, Sandra? And then you just... You just pour salt on the wounds of all your fans who, who had just watched you make such a boneheaded move. You pour salt on those wounds by quitting. What kind of a person... What kind of a player are you to have the nerve to do that to your fans. I I didn't have much respect for Sandra going into it. You know, I I had the respect for her that you know she has she she's the only person that can say that she's one survivor twice and that you know that she's the self-proclaimed queen of survivor cuz no one else can take that title away from her. Well, guess what? Because of your quit, someone else, someone else will be able to say that they have won this game twice. And you know what that's going to do 
to you, Sandra, that's going to dethrone you. Because this person, whichever one it is that wins, this person will now be able to have the one up on you to say that not only did they win twice, but they didn't quit. So enjoy your little bogus bullshit legacy, Sandra, because <laughs> you're not going to be able to come back from this. You're never going to be able to come back from this. And if CBS ever, ever gives you the opportunity to play the game again, I will stop watching altogether. Because you don't deserve to grace the field of Survivor with your bitter, vile presence anymore. You don't have that right. I would much rather see Nayanka play again over you. Because you know what? At least Nayanka tried. She tried. She may have given up, but she made it a hell of a lot further than you did when you quit. She toughed it out for a lot longer than you did. So yeah, I would much rather see the most controversial person to ever quit Survivor. Play again over you. I feel better. I feel better after after that rant. So now I, I can move on to the rest of the episode now. Sorry about that. I, I just had to get that out of there. Because I... Uh, I... I have never been more disappointed as a, as a Survivor fan than that moment in the last episode. Because, you know, at least, uh, you know, when you, when you go back to the first Edge of Extinction, you know, yeah, that, that, that season had two people that quit as well, but, you know, at least they tried. At least they toughed it out through the first um, Extinction Challenge to try to get back into the game. And then came to the realization that they're not going to be able to win their way back into the game. At least they tried. I have more respect for them than I do Sandra. That's for damn sure. So that's the end of the rant. Uh, now let's move on to the rest of the episode. Uh, so the next day on the Edge of Extinction, we you know get a whole thing with uh, between Ethan and Parvati. You know, they, they, they get a moment together, and it's, and it's kind of a good one. It's a good moment. Uh, Ethan is talking about, you know, how, how much he's struggling out there because, you know, no one else out there has to go through what he's going through. You know, he's, he's been through, uh, oh, what's that word? Oh, what's that treatment called for cancer? Chemotherapy. And, you know, how... How, how chemotherapy can uh, uh, mess up your body in um, and, and, and different ways and then how, how, how it's affecting him as he's currently playing uh, his, his season and all that. You know, he, he's going through a lot. You know, he's, he's hurting. He's, he's, he's hurting physically and psychologically. But guess what? He didn't quit. He's, he's still there. He's still playing. And you know it's 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 great to see from him that he, that he's still going because you know despite uh, what, what what he's going through, it's great to see that. But so then we get to the camps and all that the the Yara tribe, you know they're 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 enjoying their little bit of uh, bliss, their little their little bit of a high from winning a, a challenge. Uh, despite not having Boston Rob on their tribe uh, anymore and all that. But then who else but Adam should disrupt that bliss by going into his little hidden immunity idol paranoia again and running around like a like a chicken with his head cut off asking everyone, hey, do you got the idol? 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 It's driving his tribe nuts. And it's painting a target on his back. 
And you know, it's like that, that you don't do that when you're playing against all winners. You gotta try to keep your paranoia in check. Because, you know, when you're when you're paranoid, you're also annoying. Ugh. Then we get to uh Sele. After the whole Parvati vote out and Michelle and Wendell, they go at it some more because, you know, the little lovers quarrel there, I guess would I guess would be a good way to put it. <laughs> but um and, you know, Wendell just keeps painting the target that's already on his back bigger and bigger and bigger. And now, now he's pissing off Yule. And so now, so now the target's growing even bigger on his back. <laughs> so, and it's like, dude, Wendell, shut up. That's all you got to do right now. <laughs> just shut up. <laughs> Ugh. And uh, then meanwhile, back at uh, the call and all that. Uh, Jeremy is ever so is just ever so thankful to Denise for uh, for for her using one of her idols on him and all that and everything. So you know now 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 things are good between those two again. And now now Kim's even considering flipping with them to get rid of Tony. So now so now we pretty much have the we pretty much have the the primary targets for the episode in Adam Wendell and Tony. To be the next ones voted out, and so as the episode continues on, we get to the immunity challenge and all that, and it's it's one of those challenges where to be slow and smart is how you win the challenge, and um, that's how that's exactly how one of the tribes actually won. Um, the call and Sele were rushing it a little bit because you know they they knew that with this challenge because the, ch the challenge was uh, transporting a, b a big tray uh, after they fill it with water through a series of obstacles and so Sele and the call they they thought that every tribe would have to make more than one trip so they decided to rush it knowing that they would spill some water along the way and. Hey, mommy. That you know, the, the, the faster they got through it, you know, the better off that they would be. Yara, on the other hand, took the slow and steady approach. They were careful with their with their tray. They were careful with how much water they they spilled. And while and while Sally and Decal had to make two trips, Yara, they only made one trip. And they suddenly went from last place to first place. And it was beautiful to see that happen. <laughs> So they get to the so they get the, the the puzzle pieces now. They start working on the puzzle. They get the puzzle completed very quickly. So now it's down to Sally and Decal, and the difference the difference between the challenge being decided on who is going to travel council was literally less than one second. Decal just barely edged out Sally. So Sally has to go to Tribal Council. So now, Yule, Michelle, Nick, they're talking. Okay, guys, it's got to be Wendell. He's just, he's just annoying too many people. He's just talking too much and all that. <clears throat> and then Yule comes up with the idea, you know, I'll, I'll take the, uh, we, we, we got to find a way to keep the fire tokens between the, th the three of us. So, to, so it's, uh, they're like, Tell Wendell to write my name down, and if he can get, if you can get those fire tokens from him after he's voted out, I would like one of those tokens since I'm the one that's putting my name out there. So suddenly, uh, Nick and Michelle are thinking, "Huh, Yul's trying to get leverage off of us by throwing himself under the bus. He's a very crafty and sneaky player. Maybe we should get rid of Yule." So now the target. So now the vote is between Yule and Wendell. So they get to Tribal Council, and who else but Wendell goes on another rant. <laughs> and and I'm just thinking to myself, okay, that would be it for me. Bye, Wendell. That would be no. That'd be a no-brainer at that point. 
But then, they blindside you all. I'm thinking, ha. Huh? And just, I, I just think to myself, you're gonna, you're, you're actually gonna let a wild card like Wendell stay in the game over Yule, who's more calm and collected. More, you know, your, 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 your survivor funeral, because you know Wendell, he's been known to not stay loyal. To the people that he has been working with, <clears throat> it's a, it's it's how he won his first season. You know, he 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 sided with Dominic on a lot of a, a lot of uh, a lot of decisions and kept making moves against his allies. But the people that he started working with, that he before they formed new relationships with, those were the votes that that gave him the million dollars at the end. Why would you want to keep someone like that around for? He's just gonna do it again. Uh, so, Yule, he heads off to Edge of Extinction. He gives one of his fire, to he, he has two fire tokens and he gives one each to Sarah and Sophie. And that's where the episode ends. Now, uh, the next episode uh, preview that we got is hinting at the merge. That the tribes will merge in the next episode, which means Edge of Extinction Challenge. Someone from the Edge of Extinction will be coming back into the game, and Bye. I can't wait to see the fireworks and uh, just go off once that player returns, because it's gonna because all hell will break loose. I will see you guys then, and ho ho hopefully it won't take me as long to upload a video from it. But yeah, I just wanted to get that rant out of the way. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Like, subscribe, and leave, and uh, bye.